I had worked with a person at, um, I'm a respiratory therapist, I was at the local hospital, and the one girl I worked with, her nephew was uh, here at Bald Eagle. And she would talk to me about it all the time, and you know, as a parent, you don't wanna send your kids away somewhere. But um, she finally talked me into it, and we went online and wrote out an application and was accepted. And for me, I had the second doubts because as a mom, he's adopted. So it was like, I felt that should be my responsibility to take care of him, not someone else. And I remember my dad telling me if I didn't do something about it, he probably would have gotten very angry to the point he could have harmed me because he was starting to mature. He was um, no longer this tiny little kid that I could pick up and move around. So it was um, a lot, of, just a lot of chaos. Um, a lot of people didn't know what we were going through. But emotionally, I felt myself not even want to be a mom. I just didn't enjoy that factor of life, and I just, um, it was tough. It was tough parenting him when he'd be so nasty one time and hitting at you and throwing things at you. One time he threw a closet door at me, and then the next moment he's wanting to hug me, and at times I didn't feel like hugging him. Um, it was just, emotionally, I was drained. We had issues at school. He was acting out at school for different things. Uh, he was actually expelled for a little bit. Um, we had trouble with him on the bus on the way to school. Uh, we ended up taking him to school, picking him up. Um, as far as intellectual, he was very brilliant. Um, was getting great grades, but um, socially and Emotionally, he was, he was having a lot of issues. We were involved in a um, mental health facility, which they had him on many medications. I think for me, that was always a fear factor. The one time he actually had an allergic reaction to the medication and ended up being hospitalized. Um, and shortly after that is when we found out about camp. But with that medication, it was adult formula, and if he'd have stayed on it, he could have died. So that was something that made us realize we needed to do something different. He came to camp a day before he was 13 years old, and um, Chief Dan told us that he would be going to attend a three-week river trip. We had to take him off all his medicine, so I was really concerned about that. Um, I was concerned about him going to camp being dropped off at camp and then going out in this three-week river trip with nobody really knew. Um, they did keep really up to date with us. Um, that was how many years ago, so communication may have been a little different, but they kept us in to tune with what was mm -hmm. happening with him. And I remember one of the stories he told us is that when he first got to camp and was out on the river, his chief had told him that it's time to come in, they had to set up camp, and he chose not to do that. And um, the chief eventually told him that he needed to move forward, and Alexander always used as that as one of the first times he really remembered that you needed to follow directions because if you didn't, it affected other people. And we saw him about a month after that, I believe it was, for the family stay, which was awesome. Um, it was just a lot of fun interacting with your children, and he really, we could see a difference in him. Yeah, the first time he came home for his weekend visit, he was a totally different kid. And I, and I remember um, he wanted to go back to school and apologize for the behavior, what he did, how he made their time bad. And there was a miscommunication at the school, and we said, we're just going to go and see if the principal will see us, and we did. And he was a little apprehensive, but he did go in. He apologized for his behavior and how he made their life um, harder. So we really saw a change at that point. And for me, that same year, they had a mother's um, event, and I was to write him a letter, and he was to write something to me. And when we got here, the boys had decorated this whole area, just beautiful for a mom, and we shared our letters, and it was just a great time to, to again be a mom and a son after you've gone, because I'm sure moms have gone through a lot of it. Um, I took the blunt of most of it because he was working, I was the one at home, and I was the one during the day disciplining, and weekends, he worked long weekends, so I was the one there. I mean, thank goodness we had family and our older son there to help out, but I took the blunt of it, so that was very meaningful. And again, you're just emotionally drained because 
This child that you saw is a little boy. He was this fun loving little boy. And he got to a point where he didn't know where he fit in. He couldn't understand why we would love him, yet a birth mother wouldn't love him. And he really worked through that and um, it was tough. Uh, camp was great. I never saw a group of so many patient men sitting in a room in a circle and he refused to talk. It was one of our next goal sitting sessions. He refused to talk and those men were just so patient and just um, showed the compassion and just um, the grace that he needed to feel and that's what broke him down. And he wrote a letter and in the letter he called us the Shepplers. But as the letter went on, he called us mom and dad and that he realized we were forever. And so for me, that was like the big turning part for camp. I never felt fearful after I was here. It was so much different than dropping him off at that mental health place where they locked him in a room. And here he wasn't locked in a room. He's in this big open area where if he wanted to, he could run away. He never attempted that. He just um, blossomed. That's probably not the right word. He grew stronger in the person that God had created him to be. And it was really neat because when he come home for the weekends, other parents used to always say to us, wait till you got to take him back. It's going to be rough. It wasn't. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> he'd get in the car and we'd come here and he'd be on his high horse waiting to get back to camp. And it was just cool. And we had uh, parent group meetings they would have and our chief was, uh, family work was Chief Dan, and he was just uh, he, <laughs> just very encouraging. If we came up with a problem, he worked quickly to help us get it resolved. Um, so the support from camp to the, even the families is like just out of this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the parent meetings were exceptional. Uh, it kept us in touch with the kids, what they were doing. It was neat to intermingle with the other parents. You have to think about the child um, because it's, it's not a selfish act or mm -hmm. it's not an uncaring decision. You're putting the thought of your child in front of everything else because you sacrifice a year and a half of tr entrusting your child to care of, of people that you don't even know when you first come here. But again, you know, he's on no medication. Um, he had so many diagnoses, and none of them have proven to be true. Um, anxiety, depression. They told us he was gay. They told us uh, he was um, ADD, um, oppositional defiance. And once Thank that, me yeah, once the medicine stopped, he. We see pictures of him, and he has that joy where when he was on the medicine, we look at pictures now and we see he was like zoned out. I don't think he even had any connection to, he sure didn't have any feelings of what he did or how he reacted to people. And that's not it now. He's still his own person. He's still, um, he's very strong-willed, um, but it's not a negative strong-willed. He will reason. I think camp taught him to sit and reason. So I think to tell parents, um, you know, give it a try. It, there's nothing you can lose by doing it, and if anything, your child, he may not be the person you think he's going to be at the end, but he's going to be way better than he was when he came. Um, you just have to follow what camp is instructing you to do and trust that they, they're doing the best, and <laughs> I just can't believe the way the people are here compared to a medical, and he's in a medical field, but the mental health field, it's just way different. All the mental health in the world was not helping him none of those treatments, none of those counselings. He would tell us he um, would listen to them and tell them what they wanted to hear and that was it. At camp he may have done that but they got to the bottom of it. They got to what the root of what's causing that behavior. He came home and you know in the beginning it was kind of a, a transition again but it, we had support again from camp if we needed it. We didn't go anything through anything tough with that. He's now working. Um, he volunteers at our church. He oversees our media, our lighting, computers. Uh, he works for the Apple company. Um, he's actually doing things that he loved most. Um, right now he's into a lot of digital designing. And so 
I'm convinced, I tell everybody, I don't think if we would have found Camp, he wouldn't be there. I believe that he probably would have been in prison. I don't think he'd have lived in our home at some point, just because we would have had to make the hard decision to say you can't be here. Mm -hmm. After he got to the 18, he did live home till he was, I think, 22, but yeah. you know, it was very respectful till he got his self rooted to have a job and place to live. We thank God every day. We tell many people. And we know people have come and it's made a difference in their lives of their boys and, and them as well. I always say it was one of the hardest decisions we ever made, but the best. And it was this much of his time compared to the lifetime that he has.